Welcome to this episode of Moments with Mike as we continue our study together in the book of Ecclesiastes and specifically chapter 4 verses 9 through 12 today. It is well known, sometimes I think improperly applied to the institution of marriage, although the principles we'll see here certainly should apply in not just marriage, but any relationship of depth and integrity. But really, we're talking about today companionship, and we're talking about the importance of that. Let me read to you from today, the New American Standard, in verses 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lie down, how can one be warm alone? And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. I see three things here. The first is found in verse 9, the success that companionship brings. Clearly, it's a better return for our labor when we find multiple hands to work together on some project. Less effort by the individual, but yet more accomplished because we have others who have come to our side and helped us in a point of labor. Sometimes we get called to difficult tasks in our life, and when there's someone or someones beside us encouraging us, that helps us. It strengthens us. It encourages us. Here at the bridge, we often say that we use work to get the people done as opposed to using people to get the work done. I have found in my life that when we are working together with a companion or several companions, not only is the work easier and the toil less strenuous, but there's much fellowship, much encouragement, much friendship, much joy that comes when companionship is there. There's also the support that companionship brings in verses 10 through 11. Solomon, because of his brilliance of observation and his brilliant efforts of writing, talks about cold nights in Palestine and the tough, rocky terrain of Palestine. That's the backdrop, if you will, for verses 10 and 11. But the spiritual application of it is really found for us in Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 2, that we who are strong, we who are the fruitful, manifesting, if you will, the fruit of the Spirit we see in Galatians 5, 22 through 23, that we are to be people who look to restore one who's fallen in a spirit of gentleness. And I see that here in this passage, that there is a time for us as we are among the companions of our life where they go through a difficult time. Many a sleepless night, perhaps. Many a rough road that they have to traverse. But when we're called alongside to restore, when we're called alongside to encourage, when we're called alongside to minister to them in a spirit of gentleness, there is much fruit that comes from that. Clearly, in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1, there is also the re-examine of our own life in that time. Last time we were together in Moments with Mike, we talked about a quote from Socrates who said that the self-examined life is often not lived and is not worth living. That when we fail to look at our own lives, we really don't begin to understand how we can be used to support in the life of another. So I think that it's important for us to understand that this, this companionship that we bring into the lives of others is a, is a meaningful source of support, whether it's restoring someone who has fallen, not through any deliberate means, but through stumbling into sin, as all of us do, but also restoring in a spirit of gentleness, putting back into place that individual who has suffered and has fallen. And then there's finally verse 12. We've talked about, if you will, the success that companionship brings, the, the support that companionship brings. But let's end on a high note, the strength that companionship brings. The dangers of the open road would have been well known in the time that Solomon wrote this. 
and clearly is pictured in one of the greatest stories that Jesus ever told. That, of course, of the story of the Good Samaritan. The Samaritan story, you know, is that someone had been beaten and left for dead. And it was the Samaritan who found him, put him on his donkey, took him to an inn, paid for him to stay there, nursed him himself, at least initially, to a point of recovery. That's a great story. And I, I would say to you that one of the things that we need to remember from that is that the strength that was imparted by the Samaritan to the one who had been beaten along the way was his physical presence in that he not only took the time to help, but he took the time to stay. The support and the strength that we need from others, not because life itself beats us down sometimes, and it does, not because we all go through difficult seasons and difficult struggles in our life, because we do. But let's end on this note, that we need the support of the body of Christ. We need the support of the small group. We need the support of a friend, because we all, as we are endeavoring to promote the kingdom of God and to partner with God in taking his gospel throughout the world and to allow him to continue to bring about, if you will, maturity from our life, all of us face a common enemy, and that is the demonic that the enemy sends against us. All of us, in one way or another, are going to encounter spiritual opposition. We're going to understand spiritual warfare and how much easier it is for us to triumph in those times. Yes, looking to Jesus, yes, trusting his word, but having the support and the strength of another or others along to do battle alongside. God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.